Hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about practice problems for chapter five. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. My printer is being weird, so you can just ignore that. But um, I just want to go over something that I think is going to be really valuable before we actually get started on the practice problem. And that's defining some of these terms. I know that we have a lot of um, conversations about or in class about chirality and, and antimers and what all these mean. So um, I'm just going to start by going over something that really helps me visualize uh, what these different things are. So isomers. Isomers have the same number of atoms, so of the same atoms. So they have like, say, six carbons, six hydrogens, and the different arrangements of that would be different isomers. Okay, but there's two kinds. So there's uh, structural isomers. Um, and these literally mean they're built differently. So this has one, two, three, four, five carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hydrogens. This also has five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and 12 hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They're just not constructed diff the same way. They have different structures. So these are constitutional. And then there's spatial. So these are going to be isomers, they have the same number of atoms, and they're actually structured the same way, but they're arranged differently in space. And so an example of this is the connectivity of these two structures are the same. If you drew this out, it would be CH3, CH, CH, CH3. Either way, they're structured the exact same way. But... They're arranged differently in space. Their 3D arrangement or their spatial arrangement is different. I think it's spelled like that. These are going to be called stereoisomers. And within stereoisomers, you have two different types of isomers, stereoisomers. There are um, enantiomers. Enantiomers are what's known as non-superimposable mirror images. Okay, so here's something and here's something. These look very similar, right? You would even maybe think they're the same, but these can't line up perfectly. These are non-superimposable mirror images. These are enantiomers. The carbon at the center of this is known as a chiral center. They have at least one. There's a special kind that doesn't have a chiral's, uh, a chiral center with four things attached to it, but I think that's beyond the scope of this class. And they're going to be designated as R or S. Okay, on the other side, oh, another example of enantiomers are your hands. So if I didn't have any rings on, my hands would be mirror images of each other. But the reason we have left-hand gloves and right-hand gloves is because you they're not exactly the same, right? Like this is my palm is what's on top here. And this is the back of my hand is what's on top. So they're not exactly the same, even though they're mirror images. They're two different hands. There's left-handed and right-handed. So enantiomers are the same way. And an interesting application of enantiomers is like in artificial sweeteners, some of them have a an opposite configuration where you, your body can't digest it. Okay, the other option is diastereomers. I classify diastereomers as everything else. Okay, diastereomers are everything else. So these are cis trans up here, diastereomers. If you have more than one chiral center, you have a possibility for a diastereomer. So here, 
these are non-superimposable mirror images, right? Like this is a mirror image, but if I flip this around, they can't be, they're not the same. They're not imposable. Okay, sometimes it's also non-superimposable. So that's what these are. Now this has two chiral centers. If you change one to where these two are superimposable, but these two are not, these carbons are mirror images of each other, the top two. The bottom two are not mirror images of each other. They're the same configuration. So what that means is they're not enantiomers, so they must be diastereomers because this one down here is different. So that's what I classify as diastereomers, everything else. Cis-trans, more than one chiral center, all those are diastereomers. Now, how can you spot these? Chiral centers have four different things attached for the most part, for the purposes of this class. And they have to, yeah, four different things attached. Right here, these have four different things attached. So this is a chiral center. For there to be enantiomers, they have to be mirror images. So you basically have to find, I line them up to where they're mirror images and see if they're imposable. So chiral centers have four different things attached to be an enantiomer. It must be two molecules, and they have to be mirror images that are non-superimposable. I spelled that crazy. Non-superimposable. So this is the definition of chiral center, or of a chiral atom, and this is a definition of uh, enantiomers. Now, sometimes a molecule can have a chiral center without being a, a chiral molecule. That's what's known as a meso compound generally. So there's a difference between a chiral center and a chiral molecule. A chiral center is where these four different things are attached. A chiral molecule is overall, does the molecule have a right or left hand? Does it have a non-superimposable mirror image? Then it's chiral. So. If you had something that looked like this, um, so this would be a dash going into the page. This is a wedge coming out of it. Dash going into the page, wedges coming out of it. And say these are chiral molecules. So this is OH, F, and BR. And then on the bottom half, we have the same thing. So you'll see here a plane of symmetry. And because of this plane of symmetry, if you took the reflection, it actually would be superimposable. And these are known as meso compounds. If there's two chiral centers at least, if there's three and the middle one is, um, I guess that has to be four. It might have to be an even number of chiral centers. There can be a plane of symmetry and that makes it to where the reflection is no longer an enantiomer. So those are just some definitions of things that I feel like are valuable and important for us to know before we even tackle any of this. Generally with a meso compound, you're gonna have one R chiral center and one S chiral center because they're reflecting each other. And um, it'll have this plane of symmetry. It has to have the same things attached, right? Like if this was a hydrogen, that's a fluorine, then it's not a plane of symmetry anymore. So that's what you're looking for with meso compounds. And what I mean when I say R and S, this is a configuration designation. So is it sort of like right-handed or left-handed? Although that's not exactly what it means, but it's just a way for us to all get on the same page. All chemists everywhere know if you mean R or S, this is a configuration of the molecule you're using. And actually that really matters because there's a, a morning sickness medicine that they approved called thalidomide in Europe. The FDA actually didn't approve it. And thalidomide had two different configurations and they separated them all out. And then they didn't realize that it went back to a mixture. It's called racemizing in the human body. And one of the configurations, say the left-handed one, made women not have morning sickness anymore. But the other one caused birth defects in babies. So even though these seem really similar to you, 
really the differences can be significant when they interact with our body. So that's why it matters and why we need an RNS configuration. You're probably like, yeah, 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 just get to how you do it. <laughs> so the biggest thing is in assigning priorities, you're going to go based on molecular weight. And then you want to make sure your lowest priority is in the back. So let's just take this molecule, for example. I'm going to simplify it. If we had um, I forgot I was doing this one. If we had something that looks like this. Okay, so this can be our molecule, our example. The H is going into the page. The CH3 is coming out. Here's an OH on top and a fluorine over here. I just randomly assigned these colors, okay? So if we have this, we want to make sure the H is going to the back of the page. So we're kind of looking at the molecule from this angle off to the side here, and the H is in the back. So when you do that, then you assign priorities. And you assign priorities based on just what's bonded to this carbon. So you you're not looking at the CH3, you're just looking at the carbon. So carbon has a molecular weight of what, 12? Fluorines, I think, I can't remember. I know it's bigger than oxygen. So fluorine is gonna be priority one. And then oxygen will be priority two because it's the next biggest, but we're not putting oxygen plus hydrogen, just the weight of oxygen. And then carbon. So if we do that and you go one, two, three, what I do is I draw the circle and at the top, if it's going right, then it's our configuration. If we had the opposite, let's do OH, CH3, F, and the hydrogen still in the back. So priority one, two, the priorities don't change, but two, Fluorine is priority one, oxygen is two, carbon is three. Now at the top, it's going to the left. And we draw to follow the circle, it's going to the left, so that's configuration S. So really we point our lowest priority to the back and then we number and then follow which order the one, two, three goes in and that will tell you left or right. Or that will tell you S or R. If it's going left at the top, it's S. If it's going right at the top, it's R. That's my personal way of assigning it. Um, some people have other tricks to remember, like they're like counterclockwise or clockwise. It's this or that. That's confusing to me, so I just look at which, which direction the arrow is going at the top. Okay, so that's just a quick review of what isomers are, what stereoisomers are, what chiral compounds are, what meso compounds are, and what how to prioritize R and S. I do want to dig in a little bit more on meso compounds. So let's see if I can draw you the structure. Mm. Okay, I decided to just go all in and build the meso structures. Okay, so here are two molecules. They have two stereocenters. You can see there are three different things attached or four different things attached, I mean, on each of these. Each of these is a chiral center. Now with this mirror image, these are non-superimposable. These are enantiomers. These are chiral molecules. They have two chiral centers. They Each one of them is a chiral molecule because it has a left and a right hand version. Now, there's no plane of symmetry within the molecule itself either. If we're looking here at this molecule, there's no plane of symmetry within it. If you were to cut it in half, these yellows are reflecting, but these are not. And there's no way to rotate it to where they are. If we get the blues lined up, then these aren't reflecting. Okay. Now, if we just switch it to where the yellows and the blues are reflecting, there is a plane of symmetry through this molecule, right? Now we're gonna do the same thing over here and make a mirror image. So this, these are still two chiral, two chiral centers. And theoretically, you'd think they would still be two chiral molecules. There's a chiral center here, a chiral center here. They're mirror images of each other. And at first it looks like they're non-superimposable. But all you have to do to make them superimposable is rotate it. 
So the mirror image of this molecule, even though it has two chiral centers, is the same molecule. So this molecule is not a chiral molecule. It is achiral or not chiral. And that's what I mean when I talk about meso compounds is that that's what they are. That's the definition of them. A lot of times you'll see um, meso compounds and other things in this, what's known as Fisher projection. And that's where there are two, it's drawn like you're looking at it from this angle. So you can see these two wedges are coming out at you and the dash lines are going away from you and this carbon is in the plane of the page. And what's nice about that is you can rotate the molecules and try to get them to line up. So I really do love Fisher projections. They're really easy to see. Um, they're really easy to see fish, uh, chiral molecules, meso molecules, and antimers in that. Okay, so that's a quick review of just some of these concepts. I thought I was going to preface the chapter five practice problems with this, but I think I'm going to make this its own video, and then we'll go into the chapter five pro practice problems in a separate video.